small group today. Yeah. Well, that's that's not a bad thing, right? Um, where was I here? Uh, developers group agenda. There we go. Um, not a lot of changes in the release candidates these days. Um, the library refresh viewer is still out there. Uh, the and the login experimental login viewer is still out there. Um, project viewers, uh, we got experience tools, which just got an update. May or may not have actually been released, but it's updating. And uh, we actually got our shipments of the new Oculus Rift DK2 last week, so we are starting to work on that. So there will be an update on that at some point soon. Hopefully soon. So you um, guys got Oculus Rifts? So when are you mailing those out to us? <laughs> um, uh, that's not in the plan, I'm afraid. Damn. Yeah. Um, yeah, we actually did get... Uh, we got a bunch of them. Well, half a dozen of them. So... Um, we can actually get some real work done uh, on on them and with them, um, which is which is pretty cool. I didn't actually try it; I was too busy uh, the last few days. But next time I go into the office, I'll 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 try it. Um, let's see. The people who did try them thought they were very cool. Uh, Let's see. So group chat, there really isn't any update to give you on that because most of the people have been uh, who've been working on it have been either on vacation or doing other things uh, since the last time we talked. There really hasn't been much of an update. Has group chat gotten worse? Um, I have that, not. I think there's a lot of people here who would say it has. I have not looked at the stats. Anecdotally, it sounds as though. The number of instances of a of one or more chat servers uh, locking up and not forwarding messages appears to have increased, but uh, I don't want to draw any conclusions until I've seen the the real um, stats. But this um, is not as a result of ongoing work. Then, if people have been on vacation, if if I don't know that it has actually happened or not, I, can, I certainly can't make a conclusion about why it has happened or not. Um, but that is something that we, we do have a, we do have an issue queued up for the folks who work on the chat service when they get back. But right now, neither of them is in the, in the building. Um, just bad planning that they ended up all on vacation at the same time. Um, uh, so that's, but we're still very much actively seized of that whole question. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, well, um, if, you, um, if you, you know, get in touch and tell people that, the, that, the, that your group is not transmitting messages at all, uh, eventually we can get somebody to restart the server. Um, Yeah. Well, we're working on it. Um, That's what uh, they all say. It was. Just, just not this week, actually. Um, yeah. Well, um, I can't. I can't vouch for every possible person who you get support contact with. Sorry. I was actually almost impressed when we lost our team chat last time. They uh, acknowledged that it was a problem and they were working on it. The other two times it was, uh, well, 
all the other times that I've done it, it was, you know, I wound up closing the ticket myself because it was already fixed by then. Yeah. Um, I, I don't really know what's going on there, and I, I, I don't have anybody I can ask right now that, that can tell me. But as soon as they're back, I'm definitely going to ask. Um, don't, don't anybody clear cash. So speaking of caching, let's move on to the other next subject, one that we can actually talk about. Um, texture and mesh fetching. Uh, we're doing some experiments with um, changing how textures and mesh, meshes, mesh data are fetched uh, you know, to allow for the use of uh, doing so through a CDN. Um, and the experiments have started, and they're going very well. Um, we are probably going to put up some uh, regions on, right now what we're doing is sort of a proof of concept experiment um, in which we uh, in which we change the capability value that's returned, well the value that's returned as a capability to the viewer so that it's not actually a capability, it doesn't go back to the to the simulator, um, instead it goes to a name that will end up going through the CDN and then and then by another path to the ultimate asset system. Uh, we're getting the simulator out of the path, uh, entirely out of the path of fetching textures and mesh data. Now, the, the workaround we're using for testing right now um, re was designed to not allow, not require any change to any viewer for it to work. We can just use it with any viewer at all um, because it doesn't change what it expects the viewer to do to the URL. Um, probably, if we decide to go ahead with this, we will actually want to make a change to how the viewer manipulates the URL, which means we'll be doing some new, uh, probably a new capability name, yet another new capability name. Um, we definitely want to, right? Um, and, uh, and, and we would, we, we would have a new, uh, a new, an entirely new path to, to go through. Um, so when, when, if we get to that point, I will have a, an update for you on, um, uh, on that. And we'll want you to, you know, we'll have a, we'll have a viewer branch that has that change and maybe not very much else, uh, unless we just decide to fold it into Monty's HTTP pipelining, uh, change. Um, and, uh, and all that. But in the meantime, uh, we will, I think, uh, in the next week or two, probably have some test regions set up on Aditi um, that we can use to test with other viewers, uh, you know, all of your viewers, and uh, from more people in more places uh, to see what their um, respective performance uh, seems to be. Um, so we'll have we'll have something more for you. This is more a heads up than a call to action at this point. But, um, hopefully, we'll have something more for you pretty soon. You're going to leave backwards compatibility on that, though. Um, like after well, you rolled it out. For some amount of time, yes, uh, but not indefinitely. Uh, what what uh, CDN are you using? Uh, I don't think it would be appropriate for me to say at this point. Yeah, it's a top secret. You know, people will die if you tell us. But I'm curious if uh, if we could use. You know, some of us have actually good internet connections, like 100 megabit. Would be able to <clears throat> to use it with this new system. Um. Well, the one we're experimenting with right now, which may or may not be. The same one we stick with is the same one we're using that you go through when you go th get when you get the server bakes. Um, so if you can get server bakes, then you're compatible with it. Um, so uh, you know we'll we'll see how that works out. But um, 
and and whether or not we'll stay with them is is not a decision. It's not an engineering decision. It's a it's a a, a more complex decision than that. Um, so, uh, but it's it's certainly sufficient. It's working well for for doing an experiment. Um, and uh, right now we're doing we're doing experiments where we're doing the t we've done a lot of testing with people inside the U.S. Um, and that has worked quite well. And some of them have seen significant differences in their performance. Um, other people we're now doing some testing with uh, with some people that are outside the U.S. And um, when we get you guys involved, we'll get people from all over the place because that's one of the great things about having you. Um, so uh, that'll be coming soon, I think. And um, one of the things that I personally would very much like to do once we have gotten uh, pipeline requests and this, if we're doing it, um, rolled out is to um, have an orderly uh, process and plan for completely deprecating UDP texture fetching. So we will we will take it out of the simulator and it won't work anymore. Um, so. Um, I mean, that, that just sort of raises, you know, a red flag or 10. <laughs> yeah, um, but uh, they're, they're really, it, it it really should be the case that this will work dramatically better in all our all our data. Uh, it, it should be the case the that changing that it, your group tag doesn't fix things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I still I still haven't gotten around to digging into that one yet. Yes, um, and HTTP downloads of textures were supposed to be the magic bullet to so on and so on. There is a history. Yeah, there's people of, that have problems. You know, there are people that have problems with it. Well, some of the people who have complained the most about HTTP performance to, to us, we have been using as quiet test subjects for Monty's new viewer, and it's better for them. Better than UDP. Uh, so that's pretty cool. So dep time. deprecating, if I, if I could put in a, a request before yeah. you deprecate UDP, um, what about just deprecating it on, like, on, on on one of the experimental server versions or something. Well, I mean, we we deal for a week and yeah, see we, what we, comes we from that's that. how we always roll out simulator functionality because uh, that that really kind of scares the crap out of me. <laughs> yeah, well, that uh, and that's fine, and you know that's how we always roll out simulator functionality, whether it's adding something or taking something away. So of course that's the way we'll do it, um, and in fact we'll. We will, um, for something this big and important, we will probably put it on a DD first for a significant period of time, and before we even put it on a release channel, right? If when we get to it, I'm not talking about anything that's imminent. When we get to doing this, it will be the kind of thing that I will talk about with you, um, you know, a long time in advance. Uh, so, um, but it is something that you know eventually it will it will stop working. Um, uh, it it just from a from a systems and network architecture point of view that system just doesn't make any sense. It's just the wrong way to do it, and uh, and and it it creates it creates a lot of problems that end up affecting other things. Um, so. Yeah, but you you have a problem with the servers that are ju just don't deliver uh, HTTP downloads. If well, that's any what. That's what this other effort is designed to fix, and and all our data so far is that it will fix it. So, you know, we're yeah, but we're still working on it. But all the early results are great. Yeah, let's test it when there is like ten, 10 or twenty people. You know, this uh, HTTP downloads yeah. right now works great if you are alone on the sim. It works super, and all the data show that it works super, and then. Ten people decide to show up in the same place, and the things fall apart. So yep. let's wait until until we have like forty yeah, yeah. people on a sim, and then test it there, and then then say uh, it works. Absolutely. Not before. Absolutely. I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm not disagreeing with you at all. That you're you're totally correct. That's exactly what we should do, and that's exactly what we will do. 
Uh, and in fact, we'll try to do even larger scale tests than that. So, um, you know, we're going to take this as slowly and, and deliberately as we can, and we're going to be as scientific about it as we can. Um, but, um, and I think that the results are going to be better for everybody. So, um, the problem with routers, the, the problem in which we, we, you know, cause routers to fall over is really a viewer behavior problem more than a, a simulator problem. It doesn't matter what the simulator does. It's, it's how the viewer behaves. In, in Which, by the way, UDP solves very nicely, just as an aside. Uh, right. Well, um, so does, so to a large extent at least, does the, the changes that Monty's been making. So we'll, we'll get there. We, we still have work to do, um, but... Uh, We'll we'll get we'll get there. Um, so yes, if to the extent that we can identify people who have really horrible routers and haven't replaced them yet, we will we will try to get them to participate in testing. Um, Monty didn't have great luck with trying to get people to do that last time he asked, right? He we have get... we have trouble with users like that too all the time. Where we find people that can reproduce you know something that's rare and we need their help. And they just say, no, I'll just go back to the older version because that works for me. Um, would wireless broadband be included in that? Um, that's a wireless broadband is a marketing term that I can't map to anything specific enough to answer that question with. Um, I I don't really recommend running Second Life over your cell phone. Probably works, but it does for a lot of I'll users. Bet it doesn't actually. work real well. It works uh, good enough when you have nothing else. I <laughs> use it. I use it a couple of times when my main line was down, and it was not. I was expecting it to be horrible, and it was not horrible. It was okay. That's that's interesting. That's cool. Uh, um, this is not, this is not, um, the same condition. It's wireless not bad. The equivalent would be, for my ISP, the ISP is echo wireless But an equivalent to that would be, um, I'm trying to think. There's another carrier that is very similar to, similar to this. It's, it's basically a radio frequency, but not, but not uh, right. Yeah, um, it's very difficult to understand you, but I, I kind of got the gist. Yeah, it's uh, there. There are lots of network technologies out there, and some of them will be, you know, Second Life in general is a is a is a strain um, on a lot of kinds of infrastructure. Uh, we're trying to make it less so, but there it is, um, and. Uh, you know, we'll we'll see how that goes. Um, will you still be able to run Second Life on your Commodore 64? Probably not. Um, and if you have, uh, you know, 9600 baud modem in the closet and you really want to be able to run Second Life over that, it's not, not going to promise that's going to work. <laughs> what about my 486? Yeah. So... Um, We'll we'll see how it goes, but uh, um, anyway, we are doing some experiments, and I am going to be asking for help with that. Um, it turns out that we broke our own uh, some of our own statistics gathering that is useful that would have been useful in this, and so we're having to do right now. We're having to do this experiment using old versions of the viewers. Um, but uh, we have somebody working on figuring out how to repair the statistics again. So everything since version th our version 3.7.7, .7, the statistics reporting is broken. Um, and in fact, if you turn on log logging 
texture. Like broken, broken? Yeah, if you turn on logging statistics to the simulator, um, logging texture statistics to the simulator, uh, you crash on startup. Um, like really well, early. That's after, that's after 377, right? At 377 like, and later, yes. Oh, crap, because that's what we're releasing. <laughs> uh, Blocker! Yeah. Well... Just don't. It's off by default. Just don't turn it on. Um, it uh, uh, the. Hey, yeah, what's the debug? We better make sure it's off by default for us. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> oh really? <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. It's. Let me. Let me pull it up here. Hang on a second. Ah. I, it's... Right. So there's the, the setting. Make sure it's false. This has been true for a while, by the way, but of course you guys are far enough behind that that's... Yeah, we're, we're only just up to 377 now. Right. Yeah, don't turn it on. Um, it's, a, it's, it's a bad thing. Um, so, I mean, it would be really handy to have those statistics for this, but... Uh, but we're getting perfectly good stats using 376, and we will pretty soon get a fix for that and rush it through the process as much as we can. Um, so uh, we'll see. Um, so that's what the news is about that. I know it's kind of nebulous, uh, but uh, I thought it's interesting enough that you might want to hear it. Um, and we will be asking for your help testing it at some point, pretty soon. Well, as soon as we can get people's vacations to stop lining up on top of each other. Uh, I think I can pretty safely say thank you for letting us know because somebody's going to do it and we're going to hear about it as far as support's concerned. Um, uh, Great Fox, yeah, that's right. The, if UDP is deprecated, then there won't be a fallback. The fallback will be retry the, UD, the HTTP um, in a nice civilized way, preferably. But that's a different topic for a different day. Um, uh, you know, um, we've we've been using this strategy now for several months now for server bakes. It works. Um, there's no fallback to UDP for server bakes. Has never has never been. Um. Yeah, you'll have to relog with it on, and then you'll have problems. Or or you have to go to a theme that has uh, some people in it. Um. You keep uh, talking about this HTTP pipelining, but that's only percentages of improvement. But the real killer is when Sim is not sending you textures back at all, and it's still a big problem with you. Right, Good. but you weren't well, you weren't listening. We're not going I, to be talking to the Sim anymore. I know, but okay. but yes, yes, it should have been done like that. You know, like the group chat from ten years ago. But never mind that. But it's still these improvements that are made is, is not nothing is worth it if if we don't get a reliable source of on the other end. You're absolutely right. It is not worth doing if it's not reliable, and we won't do it if it's not reliable. It's not that reliable now. The mesh around us, the the, the big cone shaped thing that is this the the theater here is not rendering for me I, I was running a network intensive other job when i started up and i think i screwed it up but um 
right click on it. Yeah, I don't care that much. Um, no, I'm just saying it's part of interesting. Yeah, that, that might work. We're, we're getting that as well all the time with interesting. Uh, yeah, that did it. There, yeah. now it's there again. It's uh, we we figured that's actually a byproduct of the project interesting. Uh, you you are probably right. Um, okay, so anyway, we're we're um, we're still working on that stuff. Um, uh, a, a small question about the CDN. Does that mean that if I know the asset ID, I can download it? Um, yes, that's true today. Well, today at least you have to log in. That's not much of a barrier. Yeah, I agree. I was just curious. It doesn't provide any extra security that it's capability. Um, so yes, yes, you, you'll, you'll, you'll get a different form of the URL. What form that might take is still TBD. Um, for the purposes of the experiment, we wanted to be able to do testing with as many existing viewers as possible so that we could test from as many places as possible. So we have not yet done anything to the, ch the form of the fetch. Um, so. Uh, it's exactly what it is from the viewer point of view. It's exactly what it is today um, But that's not the long-term solution um, I don't think um, Okay uh, So number three on the ongoing or upcoming list this is under the upcoming category um, we have looked over the proposal you guys made and made very good use of the demo you did for us uh, on the hover parameter. And I think we're going to find a way to address that. Um, I don't know that if it's, I, I don't know that it's gonna be exactly the way that you described. We're still sort of looking at it and I haven't got anybody actually tasked with working on it yet, but it's well, pretty you, high in the queue. If you could get them to, we will be more than happy to help them to, because what's going to end up, if if the people working on it, whoever gets assigned to it uh, does, and no offense to Nick's, he did a great job, and we appreciate what he, the effort he made for Hover, but it just doesn't cover the use cases that it needs to cover, and if right. it doesn't cover the use cases, then the community will just reject it. Well, so the what, what we're going <laughs> to... You had to check it, didn't you? Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. So, so what we're what we're contemplating doing is a change that allows a viewer to basically um, transmit to the simulator uh, a Z offset adjustment that then gets added into all the other things that adjust your Z offset and. And believe me, it gave me a, a an awful headache when I when I got that whole process explained to me. Um, but there you go. Uh, can't that's water over the dam. Um, and and the simulator will keep track of that and pass it to each simulator you move through and so forth in all the appropriate ways. Um, and it'll get and it'll get reflected in your in your message and it will also independently be sent back to the viewer so that you can see what value the simulator is using for that so you can keep your UI properly synchronized. Um, it will not be persistent across sessions. So it'll be a session specific parameter um, is what we're contemplating. So you, if, if, you're, if, if the outfit you wear every day, um, can scripts change it? That's an interesting question. I'm not sure that we need that. And that's maybe something we can discuss. Um, I mean, scripts can contribute to your Z offset now. Yeah, well, client-side AO is another topic. 
scripts can change your Z offset now. I was not aware of that. Well, they can attach things to you, and uh, an attachment can have a Z offset change in it. Okay, you're you're getting into asking me about specific specific products with which I am unfamiliar. Um, there is one of the many things that affects your Z offset is when you upload. Uh, I think it has to be a rigged mesh attachment. Uh, um, I'm not sure. When when you when you create that item, when you upload that item in the first place, you can include a Z offset in it, and that, and if you're wearing that, it affects your Z offset. That's essentially that's what the hover wearable is. It's just a uh, a wearable that just has that. Um, and it, one of the one of the odd features of the present system is that which attachments Z offset you end up using depends on the order that they get attached and uh, whichever one gets attached last wins. I, I have no idea what any of that is supposed to mean. So, uh, you know, the 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 whole Z offset change in an attachment was was basically designed to to work for either full avatar replacements, right, where you're you're replacing your avatar with something that's a, a dragon or something, you know. Um, or a or a mouse, and and you wanna you wanna adjust it by the right amount for for the size of the body that you're you're wearing, or for something like shoes. Um, unfortunately, there's no restriction on what kind of attachments can have that parameter set. So you could have your ZF set changed by a bracelet, or by a um, by by your hair, or anything, right? Anything at all that's an attachment can affect your Z offset. This is one of the sort of chaotic things about it. Um, and right now there's no way for you to query that parameter um, of an object. You can't, you can't tell that, a, a, that, a, that a, an attachment is going to change your Z offset other than by putting it on and seeing what happens. Um, and even then, because there's so many other things affecting your Z offset, it, it's not all that easy it, to to tease it out. If you put it in an outfit, you can't predict which order the elements of your outfit are going to get attached in. And if more than one of them is doing the Z offset, you get the last one, right? So all of that is something we're looking at. We may or may not be able to make that more predictable. But um, but uh, what we're going to try to do is something that's a very simple, from a user point of view, conceptually really simple. It'll allow you as, you know, viewer authors to make a, a Z offset control that allows you to tweak your off, your your avatar vertically. Um, it will, that change will be reflected to all other viewers correctly. Um, and, uh, and that's pretty much it, right? That's what it'll do. And we won't save that setting. There's nothing to keep the viewer from saving that setting and restoring it later. But um, it doesn't become part of your avatar in any way. It doesn't become part of your outfit. For things that do become part of your outfit, we have the hover parameter. That's what that does. So that's that the hover wearable is, that's exactly what that does. So we have that part already. But as Jessica so capably demonstrated last time it doesn't cover all the cases so I'm actually kind of curious having gone back and looked at the video of that of that meeting where we had the great little demo from you Jessica I, 
it was not at all obvious why you weren't sitting on the chair, right? And why you why your hover was wrong, but uh, but it was. But it was. I'm not. Yeah. I'm not disputing that it was. Um, but that actually kind of highlighted it for me. That um, I, I actually just happened to have um, an animation um, which did have an offset. That it was made uh, for a larger avatar than what mine is, uh-huh. and um, and so it does have me sitting wrong. You know, and and uh, I went looking for it, figuring that would make a good visual example for people yeah. to see well, how that- this happens. Right. That could just as easily have been, uh, you know, a hairpiece. Right, right, yeah. That caused, and it would have caused exactly the same thing. Exactly. Um, and you'd have never been able to figure out why it was wrong. Um, yeah, so uh, so it, we, we recognize that, it's, that, that, there, are, that there are cases, um, and, and basically after I, you know, got... Nix to explain to me uh, and go back and figure out again and ex- and then explain to me all of the possible things that could could conceivably have an effect on what your avatar's Z offset becomes. Um, it uh, we collectively concluded, and I agree with the conclusion that any attempt right now to, given all of the workarounds and hacks and weirdness that's that's in there and that we don't really want to touch because we might make the problem worse instead of better there's no there's no way to do a solution that's just going to be smart enough to always do the right thing um, it, it's just not going to happen there there are too many variables um, there's too much weirdness uh, so it seems like the by far the simplest solution is just to give the end user, a very simple, straightforward control that says, adjust me up and down. And that's um, pretty much and, what we had I, and I mean, originally, yeah. Yeah, and so it's going to behave pretty much like that. It's going to be accomplished differently, but it's going to behave pretty much like that. And that will be persistent for the length, for the duration of your session. Um, and if the viewer wants to try to make it persistent between sessions, there's nothing to keep you from doing that. Yeah, I was going to say because that would be um, that you would be obviously it. ideal. You could save it locally, um, and for many cases, that will turn out to be a reasonable thing to do. Uh, I mean, in the implementation that we had, that third-party viewers had, um, it was like the the last line of everything that affects your avatar's heights and everything else. This was the last uh, thing in that list, so that um, if you right. change your boots or something, that your your, your height is going to change a little bit, and then you change that again with the Z offset. Right. So the 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 way that um, the way that we plan to do this is that the 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 height value or whatever it is that's in the the that's in the avatar appearance packet you already get will already have had that value applied, um, but you will also get the viewer's the offset value as an independent value so that you can see what it is and make your control reflect what it is, right? Um, so just, just so that you understand, we're gonna, we're, when, you get, when you get the, the value will be given to you independently, but you won't have to apply it because we want it to, be, we want it to work for people who haven't adopted this yet, right? Or who might never right. adopt it, right? They, some viewers may never have this control. Um, they should still see your avatar at the right it, yes. vertical position. Right. So it will already have been applied to the avatar appearance packet when you get it. Um, but you'll also get it back independently so that you can make your control loops work right. Right? So that's kind of the plan. Um, I can't give you a timetable. It's, it's kind of on deck to be worked on. Uh, but there are some other things that have to get fixed first. And when those things are fixed and the people working on them have been freed up, we'll, we'll move that. We'll, move we'll that certainly ahead. know that you have, um, obviously, third-party viewer developer support if you need yeah. it. Yeah, I, um, I, may, I, may, uh, I may call on that. Um, but obviously, there's a chunk you can't do. Um, I already talked before. I really don't have any new news about about the number of layers thing. 
hope to get back to it pretty soon, but it's it's still out there. Um, yes, if you change the value, the appearance packet will get updated for everybody. Just like if you change anything else about your appearance, it'll get updated. Um, uh, it won't create a new bake. It'll just adjust the copy of the, of the packet the SIM keeps around to give to everybody. Um, let's see. Um, on uh, one one final note that I forgot to write on the agenda, but I'll I, but I rem I'm remembering to say anyway. Um, we are probably going to start real real soon now with uh, upgrading the tool chain we use to Visual Studio 2013 and Xcode 5, um, and at the same time we'll be switching to uh, the new version of AutoBuild. Um, that I have been working on for quite some time with help from a few other people. Yeah, I um, did notice a commit there. Um, something about 64-bit? Yep. Uh, that one's not pulled into the main branch yet. Um, I want some review so and appraisal the, by other people. So what is the intention of that? Well, the intention is to... Is to Eventually, make it bit possible. Else? Make it possible to do builds that test how we're doing on 64 bits. Um, hmm. For this round of development, changing auto build and changing the tool chain to newer compilers is going to be a sufficient set of changes. Um, I'm not planning on doing anything about Linux. Um, we're up to 4.6 now, and if somebody else wants to do the work for Linux, uh, I'd be happy to talk about it. But um, uh, the the repo for that is um, Bitbucket Oz Linden uh, Auto Build Dash Large Address. I think oh, only I spelled it wrong here. Put the e in where it auto build at the end. dash large address. Yeah. 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 Um, and that's a fork of auto build metadata. Um, yeah, I I didn't have it in a window. Um, so the big change to auto build in this iteration, this is this large address thing is not the big change. Um, is <laughs> is uh, <laughs> that. Um, Auto build archives will, when you build an auto, when you package, when you run the auto build package step and create an archive, it will have a whole bunch of metadata about what's in the archive. And um, that will, uh, you know, un, it won't just be a tarball. It will be a tarball with a file in it that describes what's in the tarball um, and how it was built and, uh, and so on. And then um, that makes some of the auto build commands a lot easier. Um, because you won't have to to add a new thing. You won't have to specify all the little parameters separately. You can just say, add that auto build archive, and it will read everything it needs to know out of it. Um, there will be a few new... Uh, yes, I think it's entirely backwards compatible, um, because old auto builds won't care about the extra stuff that's in there. Um, yes, that's the, uh, um, that's the, that's the new version of AutoBuild. Feel free to test it if you'd like. Um, there is also a wiki page about it. Let me get that. Um, Um, actually, skip license check um, does, uh, is one of the things that's going away. You can specify the option all you want, and it won't skip the license check. Um, it will fail if the license is not declared. End of story. Good. You can't avoid it. Good thing it's easy to patch. The new effect of skip license check is that it uh, is that is that now all it does is issue a warning that skip license check doesn't work anymore. Um, 
I left the I left the the option on there so that it won't actually just cause the command to fail for a, as an unknown option. <clears throat> yes, well, that's why we're going to change all the current packages, which is why this is a big deal and not a small deal. So we're going to rebuild the entire tree. In fact, I've already rebuilt most of it. Um, so will that affect current self-compilers? Well, if they use the old tool, it won't it won't affect them at all. If they start using the new tool, they'll have to conform to the new tool's expectations. Um, the new to, the new version, which I think, if we include 64-bit support, um, and that is still an if, it's not a sure thing yet, um, then I will call it auto build 1.0. Um, if we don't include 64-bit support, I will call it auto build 0.9, um, which is what auto build metadata calls itself right now. Um, so, uh, you know, we'll be doing rebuilding all the packages, um, or nearly all the packages. Uh, it will let you build with packages that don't have the metadata in them, but it will call them dirty, and there's, a, there's an option for insisting that builds be clean, and then the build will fail if, um, if, it, if it didn't have metadata from something. Um, uh, it also makes it easier to do uh, a local package build. You can do a local install, which says, don't insist that I put this on a web server somewhere and download it and put it in the cache and all that. Just take that tarball over there and install it as this package, um, which is handy if you're a developer and you're just trying to, up to upgrade a package locally. So that's a nice, nice little addition. So check out that wiki page. It has, uh, with the exception of... So there are a few outstanding issues. If you look at the recent issues in the open uh, development project on JIRA, you'll see some new auto build issues. So those are the last few things we're going to do. 64-bit support. Um, we're going to change how versions are set. Uh, we're going to change some of the requirements around the, the license attributes. Um, um, and I forget what the last one was. So there, there are four that we're still kicking around. Um. I just wanted to backtrack a question that I think was missed from Tank. Um, if okay. you're going to start building with 2013, are you dropping support for XP? We already dropped support for XP. We announced it a couple of months ago. Well, the support was dropped in, in, in the wording. It was not actually dropped but yeah i mean compile, it'll still run on xp yeah but well, if you build from 20, 2013 it won't run for xp then right um I, I'll, I'll stick with i'll stick with what i already said we dropped support for xp a couple of months ago okay so XP you should run for officers <laughs> <laughs> not until after i'm retired uh, one uh, one suggestion was, I know yeah. you said you're not going to build with 64-bit, uh, but you are rebuilding everything for 2013. And I have done this a uh, couple of times. Trust me, if 100% is effort, you need to rebuild. Yeah, it's I only 115, me, I... 115 to get both. Yeah, and and doing it later to to rebuild the libraries for 64 bit is a much bigger project than doing it right now. So you might want right. to consider that. Well, here's the the plan is the plan is pretty straightforward. Um, I I can't afford to have us spend too long on upgrading the tool chain. We have to upgrade the tool chain for a variety of reasons. Um, those of you who didn't notice it, there was a notice from Apple a little while ago. Um, that uh, is it ten dot nine dot whatever the next number is five yeah. is going to change how it validates code signatures yeah. and if you're not building on Xcode five you're not going to be able to produce those new code signatures. But there, there was an asterisk there that said that only signing has to be done on the new one. So in theory, you could build the old one and then sign it with the new one. Yeah, I've got I've got enough fragile elements in my build farm without trying to do signing on one machine and building on a different one. So, um, uh, so I'm, I'm using that as the excuse for why I have to do this now. 
right? And I've been looking for an excuse for a long time. This is the good one, right? Um, so it's like why two K. Yeah, exactly. So we're going ahead. Not with it. real, uh, but good excuse. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's a that's a different discussion. So we won't go there. But but I am going to try and get it done. And we're going to get started on it real soon. And there's a little bit of infrastructure in place, and these last couple of auto build changes need to get get wrapped up. But we're really, really, really close to to having everything in place that we can begin. And the idea is that we will then begin and we will start rebuilding everything. And what I have told the team is that when we divvy this stuff up and start rebuilding all the packages, the goal will be try to build it both 32-bit and 64-bit. If it doesn't build easily, if it's not easy and obvious how to get things to work in the 64-bit, catalog the problem and move on. Get the 32-bit build done. And then we can go back, and maybe some of you can help, um, we can go back and figure out the 64-bit issues and think about actually building them and, and doing them. We managed to rebuild all Windows libraries in two days for 64-bit well, using the current tool chain. Okay. So that would be, you know, it may turn out that that, that that makes it a pretty easy thing. Even if that's true, I cannot promise you that we'll actually ship a 64-bit viewer. No, no, I'm, I because didn't say that you should uh, ship right. 64 b but I said if you are rebuilding everything for 2013, right. it's only a slight extra effort to get 64 bit in the same in the well, same goal. I I hope that you're I hope that you're right. Um, I'm I've got my fingers crossed, and we're going to give it a try. 2013, not 2014. We're not going to attempt 2014. 2013. Everybody's clear. That is not. Uh, 2014, the Java right. Studio. Well, but people think, people keep asking that question, so I keep giving the same answer. Um, so, uh, and, and another thing we're not going to do right away is change to using any, uh, the, the, the goal is to get the current stuff as much as possible to compile the way it is with the new tools. We're not going to start introducing C++11 features or any other cleverness, no matter how attractive it is. Uh, the goal is just to change the tools. So we're trying to do this in, in steps. The um, Whether or not we'll do that other stuff later is another question. So we'll deal with it at another time. The um, uh, the we're gonna um, we're gonna try and get everything built. If we've got 64 build bit builds of the packages, we'll let you know where they are um, and. Um, We'll uh, we'll we'll get we'll get there eventually. Um, the the big problem with the big question marks with the 64 with actually shipping 64 bit viewers is uh, are um, number one what's it going to cost us to add another whole thing that we have to QA and that's a big deal a very big deal um, and because um, we can't just saying we've tested the 32 bit version. The 64-bit version must be okay is obvious nonsense, right? And vice versa. But I wouldn't say it's actually it, obvious. Um, we've we've uh, found that um, in all our QAing that we've been doing since we've had 64 bits, there's been uh, nothing showed up in the 32-bit that didn't okay. show up in the 64-bit, or vice versa. Right. Okay. But um, but I will actually, never I will never in the history of in the in the remaining lifetime of the solar system convince my QA people of that. So and and actually I agree with them. Jessica, so, you should test sixty four bits and not thirty two bits if you're just testing one. Yeah, because maybe six, maybe we'll 60, maybe we'll get there. So uh, so that's one big question. The other the, the second big question from the product management point of view, um and it's a it's a perfectly legitimate question, no matter how much those of us who like the the, the better stuff just because it's better is um, whether or not there's a real difference um, in the user experience. Um, do we actually get anything for having produced a 64-bit viewer that you we don't much get? Less. Well, yeah, except we already crash much less. Even if it, you just run the 32-bit viewer on a 64-bit, yes, platform. but you crash extra less on 64 on 64. <laughs> when when I can demonstrate that, 
then maybe we'll... Well, interested. if you have fixed the, f the bloody statistics you are promising to fix for over a year now, you will yeah. know. Uh, it, I'm, yeah. Yeah, next You're, week, next month, I, when I finish this listen, course... it's not under my control. Yeah, I can't, yeah, I can't yeah. change that stuff. Uh, you, all I can you do is said harass you were me. going to a course to San Francisco precisely for yeah, that reason. Yeah, it didn't work out. Um, yeah, I know. <laughs> okay, so uh, uh, anyway, getting getting back to it. So we're gonna we're gonna try. We're gonna keep. We're gonna try to take some of the steps necessary. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> Monty, don't say things like that. You throw me off. Um, <laughs> Uh, and, and, and we'll see, you know, we'll, we'll get there. Um, but, uh, so we don't, we don't really have good scientific data yet on what it's going to, what good it's going to do us. Um, the data is there. You just need to know how to extract it. Well, no, cause we don't have a 64 bit viewer. I can't, I can't compare something we don't have. Well, for all practical purposes, you know, nobody is using your viewer, so your data is less relevant than the no, others. That's, that's overstating it, you know, somewhat. We are the number three well, viewer. Um, well, with 10% 10, 10 of the use, you know, that's yeah, I, getting well, into... Believe me, I, but, I, 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 I'm... So you have the data from 90% of the use. You can use that data to determine whether 64-bit is more reliable or not. Uh, actually, I can't. Um, it's not easy from the data to tell what the difference is between 32-bit on 64-bit platforms and and um, you have the data. Every viewer will tell you both of those, so you just need to extract it. Well, really has yeah. got some anecdotal evidence up there, but yeah. Um, Uh, memory. Oh, and, yeah, and memory errors, right? That's. I mean, um, that's a lot of the crashes come from that, from memory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, obviously, right? I mean, that's the advantage you get with 64-bit. So, um, well, we'll we'll see. I mean, I I believe it, uh, but my believing it is not enough. Um, so, we'll. So extract the data and then start believing it. I'm, I'm building the infrastructure. I'm making the <laughs> options possible. Uh, right now, I can't build one 64-bit if I wanted to. So I'm trying to get to the point where at least I can if I want to. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. Um, okay, so that actually was the last thing. So we're going to start on that big rebuild thing and... Um, maybe that will actually give you a chance to catch up with us on features because we won't be doing any for a little while. Well, so because you know, we get criticized for being a little bit behind on things, but um, the, the fact is is that if I were to even, let's say that AIS-3 didn't interfere with our LVA in Firestorm, let's say it didn't, in fact, we could just like drag it and merge it in and release it tomorrow, it would never in a million years pass my QA. They, they would absolutely rage quit before they let me release it because AIS-3 just has a lot, of, a lot of bugs. And so in some ways, us staying a little bit behind you guys is actually strategic. It, it's not because we're like lazy oh, and slow I, and everything. Yeah, I, but totally, I totally get that. <laughs> I mean, we, we sort of I, have to wait, you know, until you guys fix a few things before we can... Kind yeah, we right. I yeah. I I totally I totally get that and I I'm not saying I would do it differently in your place. And in fact, I think uh, to be perfectly honest about it, I think you guys are all completely nuts to even try to keep merging things up all the time like this. <laughs> I think, it, you're crazy. Um <laughs> Uh, it's a wonderful kind of crazy. It's a it's a very functional kind of crazy. It you know it serves a whole lot of users in a really nice way, and that's that's great. Um, but you're nuts. Crazy is crazy, no matter crazy. which way you cut it. I don't understand yeah, it's, it. You know? it's pretty whack. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but hey, you know, uh, I I think you're kind of a fun crazy crowd, so uh, I'll keep on hanging out with you. Um. um. Any other topics? Well, what are we yes, doing? yes, thank you. I have a couple of questions for you, Oz. Um, 
one with this 512k thing that's running around the net now um are your are linden lab servers updated to not be affected by that to start with um i'm i i nothing is jumping up when i yeah routing cable problem all that uh i have no idea Okay, that's one thing I would like to know not, if possible. Not the right that would be something their backbone provider has to deal with, not not Linden Lab directly. I would not think. Yeah, I would. I would be really, um, really, really surprised if uh, if that would directly affect anything that we own or operate. Okay, um, and my second one is, um, you're going to hate me for this. It almost um, certainly affects lots of our users just because it's affecting the way the backbone works, right? That's yeah. Not something, and that's not anything we can do much about. Yeah. Okay. My, my other question is, is it possible to get some uh, um, documentation updated, particularly the statistics bar and the seed and loading statistics floater that's new? Well, new to um, us, anyhow. It is... It is it is possible to get documentation updated. Um, the easiest thing to do would be for you to file a bug or give me a point or two and it's already filed a bug. Okay. And I can try and get it prioritized. Okay, thank you. Um, it's just because uh, with the loss of the lag meter, we're, I'm sort of struggling to find easy ways to explain to people how to find out what sort of lag is actually affecting them, right? Yeah, well, right. Um. I have a question for Monty. If if you've been rebuilding all this stuff, is is this a funky patching done by Linden Lab to boost core routines? Is that gone, or are you still continuing to do that? Which fun which funky branching? What I've been doing is I've been making renaming of core routines in Boost. Oh, core routines. That is, there's still a little bit of that. Um, because we haven't cleaned up, um, it really Isn't wants to go away. Is it easier to clean up the viewer than keep uh, patching the, the library? The person who gets tasked with doing that thinks otherwise, and I decide not to get involved in that ar argument. Cause get involved. Um, drop me an email and summarize the argument, and I will get involved. Okay. I okay. I don't promise to agree with you, but I will. At least. Well, the thing it. is, uh, the, the viewer uses uh, some obsolete names of boost functions, and instead of changing that in the viewer, they keep patching the boost used in the viewer. Oh, that I doesn't seem like a very good idea. If that's the way, it, if that's true, then that seems like a pretty easy thing to fix. But since yeah, we're going to be uh, rebuilding boost anyway. Yeah, and I would think that it would be good to fix the viewer once and for all and not keep uh, patching every new version of Boost that comes along. Um, in in general, uh, you know, stated as a general proposition, I, I find myself agreeing with you. But, of course, I'm not doing the work, so I'll have to discuss it with the people who will. Um, What, what was removed and interesting and it's back? Oh, uh, lag meter. You guys butchered lag meter. We don't know why. Oh, neither do I. Butchered it. Killed it. Uh, our preview. It's in. We've it's in, tried to it's bring in it back. Whatever I'm running. We've. Yeah, you've, you're on bear. Apparently, you brought it back in bear. Am I? I don't know. I know what I'm on. But um, it's it's certainly significantly changed. We've we tried to make some fixes and uh, to it in uh, for this release that's coming. But um, our preview group is uh, noticing that it's quite different. We're not getting positive reviews. <laughs> I 
Oh no, I'm I'm running uh, Monty's library refresh viewer right now. There's the um, the uh, living dictionary, really. Uh, yeah, it, it it may just be the effect of the stats problem because stats got extensively rewritten and yeah, that's kind of and what... in some cases broken. That's what well, why, I mean, that's why where was, that why was that done? Well, th that's. Uh, I, I, there were some there were <laughs> some know. bad things about the way stats were being collected, and the 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 goal was to make a nice, a really nice way of of doing it. And there is there is a nicer looking way of doing it. Unfortunately, we found that it's got some serious bugs in it. Didn't so, quite work out. Well, you know, it it just needs another round of changes. This is why you let us do things ahead of you, right? Didn't we just have that conversation? <laughs> Um. Oh, hip chat. Yeah, I'm. I'm not going there right now. Um. There is a document for the. Yeah. There's a release notes addendum. There's a there's a link in the release notes for the refresh viewer to a document that explains everything that Monty did. It's an awesome document. It's really well done. Hooray for Monty! Really, it was really well done, uh, and it has pointers to all the repos. Um, I could not have done the rebuilding I've been doing without starting from that. Um, yeah, Monty does docs. Uh, he's also got a he got he's got a, a really good document on um, how to set up a repository that has vendor branches and all that good stuff. In really? It. Yeah, it's really good. Monty, if, you know, after you leave Linen Lab, we can't pay very much, but you know, you're <laughs> always welcome here. I will keep that in mind. <laughs> if you steal money, is, I'll steal more. We, we have more users. <laughs> <laughs> it's a deal um, we sometimes look forward to. <laughs> uh, oh, okay, so you, you can't steal Whirly. You, you can borrow her? Does that mean we get to borrow Monty? Listen, he's doing, he's doing everything you need done anyway. Just leave him alone. Same deal. <laughs> Um, other topics. We're over time, but I'm and and I've barely said anything, so it's totally not my fault. Cocoa bugs. I, Somebody I asked about cocoa bugs. I don't. I don't think we've done anything about cocoa bugs. I don't know. Y you know where the bug reports are. Keep an eye on them. And somebody said something about um, help for self compilers. I don't know who asked that question. Um, oh, I see. Um, you know I what the really it. cool thing about wikis is? You can edit them. <laughs> you should not be building Linden Viewer on Linux anyway. You know, pick one of the others. Linden Lab is not really interested in Linux, so it reflects in the quality of the build as well. Not interested in that. I'm interested in building a viewer. I can't rewrite the wiki because I'm not a coder, I'm not a developer, I'm just a self-compiler, so I'm well, just curious the if there is a resource. The, if, if the instructions on the wiki are, are, are incorrect, fix them. Um, well, but I think well, his I mean, point is he doesn't know what Fixing implies be. that I have knowledge to fix them. Oh, I see. Um, yeah, uh, there's more expertise on building in Linux sitting right here in the circle around you than um, than I can muster. So um, I don't build on Linux myself other than when I send it to the build farm and it, and it always works for me, but um, uh, Will says to push the fix for open 217. 
What is 217? Uh, I'm reading it. Actually, uh, I, I found uh, Firestorm instructions for building stuff to be very useful. You know, you can uh, use those. And with only slight, I don't think actually any modifications you can build a Linden viewer with. I think most yeah, of our uh, uh, proves was done by uh, incorrect. I think. Yeah, but That's I think mo most of those will uh, will work on with a Linden source code directly. Uh, Oz uh, Tech asks if all the updates to the 3P libraries have been moved or merged to Bitbucket Linden Lab. No, they will be merged to Bitbucket Linden Lab when um, Monty's viewer becomes the release viewer. So when are you starting with this uh, big uh, rebuild to, for new tools? Uh, I'm hoping the next week or two. Depends on how quickly I get the infrastructure in place. And how is that going to work? Is that going to be a project viewer or just switch? Oh yeah, it'll go through the usual. It'll go through the usual sequence, just like the refresh viewer has. In fact, it'll be built. And we're you know we're going to start with where the refresh viewer is. Yes, yeah, so because Monty's already done a lot of the work. Yay. Uh, let me just finish moving this Open217 into the place where I will keep track of it. Uh, ready for review. Think, think. Okay. Apologies for that having fallen through the cracks. That looks like it should be really easy to move along. So I will do that. Yes, group ban is in viewer release. Um, if you if you're planning on rebuilding a lot of packages and you want to try using the new auto build, feel free. Um, feedback is welcome. There's a few more changes sneaking in, but maybe including the 64-bit one. That's great. All right. Are we done? Uh, I have nothing else. Uh, zipper is zipper um, is dead. Zipper does not look like it's going to go forward. Yeah. Um, it uh, it has a really spectacularly bad crash rate on some OS platforms. Um, on others, it it works, but it's uh, that our our working theory is that uh, FiFS just isn't as portable as it needs to be to be backwards compatible enough, um, and so I think we're just going to discard it. Well, it wasn't it it wasn't purely motivated by faster install. It was also a step towards more easily skinning the viewer. Um, it would have allowed you to do skins as a single you know, separate file, but um, that's not a sufficiently big deal. Um, Cinder, what you want is the install dash dash local switch.
can't you put a, a file URL in there? It worked for you, me before. Yeah, you don't. Even, you don't even need to use a file URL. You can just give it a local path name, and it internally it constructs a file URL out of it. Um, Um, I'm, not, I'm not sure I understand what you're suggesting. You don't have to rebuild the, the hash is, is of the content of the file, not of the URL. Right. But I need to know where to get it from, so that doesn't help me. But but you don't have to rebuild the package if you change your download location. You just have to change the configuration file that accesses it. Yes. Ah. Uh, yes, that's true. That's, hmm. Okay, that's a thought. Um, I will have to think about that. Can't you just use the file name part of the URL? Yeah, I might. That would have to be the. It would have to be the the last element of the ur of the URL path and the hash, but. We compare the hash anyway, so that doesn't matter. That's that's a thought, Cinder. Um, feel feel free to file an open issue suggesting that. Um, stick an auto build label on it if you can, um, and if you want to come up with a patch, that's even better. All right. Um, are we done? I think so. We're done. Yay. Have a good weekend, everyone. Yeah. Have Take fun. Care, everyone. Thanks, for Thanks your everybody. Thanks, Jess. Thanks for coming, everybody. Oh man, why didn't I get a chair? What is this? And poof. Oh man.